think, David, you're going to kick off this boff, and then we've got two or three other areas that we'd like to address as well. Yeah, we, I mean, we have we have 45 minutes, right? Yeah. And, um, and I have it down that I have several topics to talk, I wanted to, us to talk about, which is the, the new self-test framework in GCC, um, the RTL front end that I've been working on, and the Gimple front end that uh, Prasad Gangal um, has been working on as a Google Summer of Code project, um, mentored by Richie. I, I was wondering if Prasad or Richie were present today. Prasad, Richie there? I'm here. Oh yeah, yeah, he's Richie, so yeah. Okay, <laughs> great. Um, and Jeremy, I know you, you wanted to talk about making the GCC test suite more independent and the work that's been going on on that, just so it could be a reference test suite um, for other compilers. And I, and I read Ed and Graham had ideas about parallelizing the test suite. Yes, I, that's right. I think it, it's, mo it's mostly Ed and Graham talking that stuff. I think it'll be relatively small. You know, bouncing ideas around of where they've been moving on that. So mm -hmm. I'd use most of the time for your stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, so, I mean, shall I just, I, I can talk about the self test framework that we added if everyone can hear me, okay? Yeah, I think we, yeah, yeah. Good. Thumbs yeah. up for that one. So, his, historically, we've had, um, like, I, I, I think what we, in GCC, we've had really good, what I would call end to end testing, or maybe integration testing, in that you, you put in source code in at one end, one end, and you invoke the compiler, you get machine code out of the other, and you run it, and you hope, uh, and you assert basically you, um, that it does something sane, perhaps verifying properties at a dump in the middle. And if I run the GCC test suite today, the Deja Canoe one, I get three, about 300,000 pass results, which is great. Um, but something we've had historically haven't been so good at is um, unit testing, uh, of going in at, at a very fine detail level of the individual components inside GCC. Um, and we've done a little bit of that historically with plugins. Uh, I say historically, but plugins are relatively recent. Um, I think GCC is, is 27 years old, and plugins are um, not so. Um, so, um, so things like exercising data structures, like the core things inside the, um, the data structures that make up the compiler, um, and so um, the, um, my philosophy is the earlier a bug is detected, the better. Um, and I mean, um, so the new thing in, I've been working on for GCC7 is this dash f self test. Um, there's a dash between self and test. Um, and the idea is inside um, inside CC1, um, we can, for sake of being my better, let's run a bunch of additional uh, self testing code so that we can write app unit tests. Uh, for the much more kind of lower level stuff, like does our vector implementation work, does our control flow handling work, um, and um, and that lets write different kinds of tests that we couldn't really do before using Deja GNU. Um, for example, we can run hundreds or thousands of tests um, and just that may, maybe generate every possible control flow graph involving, say, up to n blocks, right? say five, and then generate the dominators and um, verify that things don't explode when we throw in um, exception handling or whatever. Um, and, and, and that sort of sort of programmic generation of test cases is one aspect where this is, is, is kind of maybe you stronger than or. Is, is an area where it's stronger compared to the, the end, end Deja Canoe approach. Um, and so what's, in, what's in, the, in trunk today for GCC 7 is that we can run, this runs, in fact, by default at each, uh, at each of the three stages of the, of the classic bootstrap. Um, at, so potentially if there's a major, if there's a serious problem, it'll actually be caught because the self-test will fail at like stage two or stage three of the bootstrap. Whereas before, if you have with this bug, you might have been pouring over assembly dumps and figuring out well, what's going on. And now, hopefully, if we're going to fail, we'll at least fail fast. And, and, and here is the line of code that's failing. Um, and the other thing I really like about this is we've had this approach towards modularity in GCC, where we're trying to pick it apart. And my feeling is that modular, modular code kind of modular tests. Um, if, if what we have is end-to-end -end tests, where we have to run the entire compiler to test it, 
that isn't so modularity. Whereas if we can say, okay, bring up a few classes and exercise them, um, that um, um, then tests the modular as well as um, we, I, you run this week. I get about thirty thousand past results, and we have uh, we have coordinated structures um, for things like the garbage collector, which is like a major bugbear of mine. I hate the thing, and at least we can kind of confine it a bit, or constrain it a bit with with unit tests. Um, and my particular focus is a, di a diagnostic subsystem. Um, there are a lot of interesting boundary conditions in the, in the diagnostic subsystem, whereas um, once you have a large number of, once you start dealing with large source files, it goes into various fallback modes, where you kind of fit everything into a 32-bit int. Uh, so if you have really wide lines, or really long source files and combinations of those, you can start um, going to fallback mode, and we say, okay, we're not going to bother tracking column information anymore. Um, or we're not going to bother, there's an optimization for tracking ranges with a source line. Um, and at some point, we, we throw up our hands and say, well, we're, not, we're going to stop doing that optimization because we're running out of 32 bit. Um, and, and so I'm able to run all, by using this programmatic approach, I'm able to say, well, what are all the interesting boundary conditions or boundary value today? And run every self test, run near the Values, and which is something we just couldn't do before with Deja Canoe. Um, and, and so that I'm quite excited about this approach. Um, and I guess the question the ETC um, community is do we like having two different testing approaches? Um, and when should we use each approach? Um, because I don't want us to sacrifice the great kind of end to end testing we have. Um, and I kind of think of it as a belt and braces, or is it belt and suspenders, depending on whether you're British or American English here. Um, and so, I uh, of the DC community is, um, well, this is great in that we've got a load more self-testing now when um, enable checking equals debug or whatever. In, the, in each one of the DCC developers, the GCC seven. Um, Around sometime around November, we're going to cut over into stage three of development, and where uh, checking will be um, will be in release mode. Enable checking was released by default, and suddenly all the self tests I've realised will be turned off by default. What are we going to do about that? Does this change how we do GC um, stage one to stage three cut off cut over? So maybe we could spend. Um, and also, I guess my question is, do people? Is, is this a, is is it a whole idea crazy or I um, mean hopefully I'm I, this is all good sane development stuff and people are happy with the this approach. Um, I was hoping to attend but I, the, in person but I couldn't. So one thing I want to do is just gauge people's facial reactions to this, which I can kind of see in the front row. Um, hi guys, um, but um, uh, it's a it, I mean a, a boff. So I guess it's a more of a discussion format. So should we spend five minutes talking about self-test stuff? Yeah, okay. Uh, comments? Which do you want to make? Yeah, I think the, the self-test stuff is a good addition because we basically have no other good way of doing this kind of tests right now other than the, we had previously, previously we've used uh, plugins to do these kind of self-tests, right? Uh, maybe, you, uh, you, you, Martin, you've done some of these because I told you, well, there's an example, and you can use plugins for this, right? Um, and do it from the Dijagnu side. So you could do all the self tests inside one plugin, for example. Um, uh, with, with the self tests, the, the only issue I have is that if the self tests start to grow, like we could end up with CC1 being half of the size taken by self tests. So maybe in release mode, we want to not compile them in. For, for a compiler, we ship. So it's 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 at the, at the moment it's not an issue, I think. But but if we if we think this is really the way to do self testing of our infrastructure, which I think it's not the very most elegant way of doing self testing. It's more like one of the pragmatic approaches, like the plugging plugging approach also was a pragmatic approach. Um, at some point, we need to decide. Well, what's the real way to do self-testing of our infrastructure. 
And yeah, because I mean, it, it, it doesn't really scale to testing every function with a self test. Yes, it's it, it's it's very con it's very convenient at the moment. So the other way would be to have separate executables for everything and include the source file and do some. Well, you can imagine a lot of similar ways of doing the self-testing, but outside of the GCC binary. Um, so if I'm I'm just watching at the, as a bystander right now and watching them to grow, and but at some point we probably need to decide well. Do we want half of GCC to be composed of self-tests and the other half not, or not? Another thing is that the self-test could, in theory, have a global construction and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm going to pass the microphone around as we go around so we actually get this on tape. Um, could someone briefly explain the architecture of the self-tests? Are they just GCC asserts but with more complicated functions being called? I didn't follow the patch there. So um, they, they are basically test, test functions that are somehow collected globally. And if you invoke GCC with minus self-test, then it will all invoke all these functions and do whatever you did in those and assert if it's something fails or print something. They're, if something they're fails. like unit testing, right? yeah. except for the unit testing and like one little function. And, and, and they are unit all unit tests are contained in your GCC executable. Right, got it. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I wanted to raise the question of what policy do we really want for a failure of a self-test? In the sense that, um, I mean, as, I, I'm, I'm sorry for the, the way that, that I raised the issue. I want to again apologize to David, but uh, when, it, when it occurred, and, and appreciate Jakob's help with this, but right now, we have this policy where one can do a minor, you know, error, and 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 with the data a new tests, this will just follow. Okay, you get another, you know, error message or you know something, and you know, more unexpected failures in the test suite. And with the self test, the current assumption is that this is just going to crash the entire compiler and, and break your bootstrap. And this is maybe okay once we ha are assured that the self test itself is correct and the infrastructure is correct. But I think at least realize propose that we need some sort of careful way to integrate this because once it's uh, known that the self-test is correct, then hopefully this is, and it's not something very architecture specific, especially in the tree and Gimple and other generic areas of the compiler, it should fail in any architecture. Right? For anybody doing this self-test, if you have properly bootstrapped as one should already with a patch that if it causes a self-test problem, fine, you want to find that right away. But as these tests are going in, you know, there's a question of how confident are we that the tests themselves are correct, are really you know, designed correctly, and do we want this um, very heavy hammer in terms of the failure mode for that test, and do we want a policy change in GCC, which again has been, okay, you know, you, you created this new, I mean, if, if with Deja Canu, oh, we've created this new failure, maybe we'll even notice it three weeks from now, or, you know, whenever people check, and if the bootstrap, okay, you've got, you know, 24 hours or 48 hours, or, you know, these sorts of policies for reverting it, do we need something more immediate? If we're gonna start having this more extensive self test, do we want, a more, uh, more leverage for the rest of the community to say, oh, this patch broke something, and immediately being able to revert it without lots of discussion, without lots of sort of you know angst and these other things. So, I you know appreciate this unit test cap you know framework and where we're trying to head with it, but I think that we need to, as a community, understand the balance between the severity of the failure that the self, how the self-test is reported and how the community is able to react to that self-test. So, so I think 
a mistake in, in a self-test in the, in the test itself isn't different than like people introducing some W error issue for another host or another target. It's, it happens and well, everybody can fix it. And if you, if you are on the host that run into the self-test error, you can probably, you're probably the best one to investigate it and fix it. And just, well, just fix it. Or, or just or just revert it, or, or just shout as you usually do. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but there. But it, I, I don't think self tests are in, in any in any way different than the other usual mistakes that happen that are of, of the same. Yeah, yeah but, but again, I mean, I mean, as, as you probably remember, I mean, some of us who've been around GCC yeah, yeah. long enough with the RTL, when most of the optimizations were the RTL, and the RTL is very delicate, and there are all of these specific issues that. If you know, a patch that looked fine on x86 would break on you know ARM or would break on this, now that we've moved most of the optimizations into you know, Tree, SSA, and Gimple, and these higher level common optimizations, there's a lot less differentiation between the Gimple produced on different targets. I mean, we have different headers and a couple of different details at that level, but yeah. most so Gimple. right. So 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 most you know. So, so I, I think part, at least I observed that GCC has been much more stable in general and been much more useful and not sort of just broken for, for weeks on end because if a person has a problem with the patch, I mean, except for the vector, <laughs> we've got all sorts, you know, there, most things are going to appear on all architectures. And so we're able to avoid these sorts of severe problems earlier on. And with, again, with most of the tests in Deja GNU, you know, yes, you may have okay. Some patch will have introduced a you know a, you know more unexpected failures. And another failure, in your some patches will jump at a hundred. I mean, with some of these all these uh, you know GCOB things, but but the compiler still runs. Yeah. You're still able to boost everything, able to do things. It's, it's mostly all the Deja GNU stuff. It's, it's testing the target in the end, and the self tests are mostly host dependent now. So you get like locales and whatever issues factored into the, the, the whole thing, which didn't matter for the Dijak new tests we had right now. So it's just another, another level of um, target dependence. It's host dependence now. I think if, the, if a self-test is crashing the compiler and it reveals an actual bug, then that's great. It's exactly the purpose of it. If the self-test is crashing the compiler because the test has a, a you know, the, the test is wrong, which seems to be your, your main concern, I think, that what if we're putting in buggy testing, which causes false, then hack out the test. Yes, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, as I understand it, the tests are designed to be very easy to disable, you know, as an individual, like, okay, turn off that test while we figure out why it's failing. Um, you know, that... So instead of reverting the change that starts failing, disable the problematic test, everyone else can keep going as they are, and the person who wrote or understands the test can figure out if it's buggy or, you know, it doesn't have to block development and doesn't even have to be reverted. You can just say, turn that one test off and everything else keeps going and it shouldn't be a, a bottleneck. Well, perhaps you can be also about the severity of the test if if it really tests something which is worth the breaking the bootstrap for, if it's a test for something, uh, some formatting in a dump file or something, might yeah, be not, not my, important. My, I mean, not to try to make sure I mean, right my, my, my question is more about having a policy. I agree that tests can be disabled, like can be whatever. I just think that we as a community should make a decision or should agree that okay, if, this, if, if somebody accidentally, inadvertently puts this test in, anybody, even with, you know, without global reviewer privilege, is able to just you know, rever you know, turn off that test. I mean, if, if, as things are going in, I mean, once the test, so that it's, it's not as... I, I, I don't... It's already exactly the same as the thing. Well, yeah, it's just, just, just bend the rules or interpret the rules correctly. We don't need more policy. Okay. If you can, if 
you figure it out what's going on sure. right away. Sure, sure. But uh, assuming that you, you don't have the, you, you may yeah. not have the time, you may not have, you yeah. may not know what the test is doing. You know, Okay, um, David, I'm not sure how much of that you caught, um, but uh, do you have anything to add at this stage or do you want to move on to your next item? Maybe you want to 
summarize that, but basically it's been embedded in the C front end. Okay, hand it over to Richie. Yeah, so uh, the, the current state of the Gimbal front end is basically that you can uh, put a keyword before a C function in your C compilation unit and say, well, now this function is actually implemented in Gimbal and not in C. And then the front end will actually use some alternate parsing routines to parse Gimbal statements and Gimbal code and emit directly the Gimbal statement, not generic, and go through the Gimplifier, but emit uh, a Gimbal IL with it supports SSA. It doesn't construct the CFG directly, but it lets the CFG builder build the CFG, which also means that the, the P nodes for the SSA are uh, function calls specially annotated that are transformed by the CFG creation into real fees. Um, and you, you can annotate this function with attributes like start compiling this function with pass x or compile it with passes x, y, and then z. And my original intent when I pushed Prasad into the direction of doing it that way is uh, to make our regression testing for all the correctness test cases we've accumulated in the last 25 years less dependent on changes on the compiler. Like if you look at some early execute tests, they are all optimized away right now. So they are not really anymore testing the RTL optimization bug they were usually added for, right? So, and to keep the input suitable to still test uh, the original bug, you need to keep the input into the past that was miscompiling stuff stable. Well, the easiest way for stable Gimpel is basically to, to write it into the source and start compilation at the point where it broke, right? Uh, so the idea is that you can have your reduced t C test case, which you need anyway for an execute test case, and look at the function that was miscompiled and turn that into a Gimpel and put the Gimpel in there that was how it was before the failing pass. And so you have your, your testing harness is just regular C, and the miscompiled function you will write in Gimple, which means the stable IL into uh, this specific pass that was miscompiling. So it's basically turned into a unit test for a pass, for a Gimple pass, but still it's a, an execute test. So you will uh, check the final correctness of the whole test case. So it it also serves, yeah, that's, that's the whole idea of having a Gimple front end, and that was my original idea of how we could use the RTL front end, how it was originally uh, developed as well. So just have the, a regular C um, test case and have one function that is miscompiled by the RTL uh, routine, have write it as RTL in a test case and run it. It's, it's of course more difficult because it's a lot more target dependent than, uh, or, uh, than for the Gimple front end case. For the gimbal front end, there are some target dependencies, but I guess for each target, if you have the, the correct input into the gimbal pass, it will miscompile it anyway. You just get different gimbal from the same C code. But if you fix the gimbal, then you will eventually get the miscompiled for all the other targets as well. There are, if you have like variable arcs or stuff like that, you may not be able to use the gimbal on all targets, for example. Yeah, Processors and uh, cases and, yes. and fall back to, to the C yeah. implementation just just to cover ev everything. Any other comments? Well, or we could compile for all of these tests. Also, the, the C variant. Right. So, so have, have not two separate test cases, <laughs> but have two modes one with going through the Gimbal way and one with the C fallback. Yes, if you have a special... Otherwise, otherwise, it can be just one very small test which just has the options and some micro... Right. The other one included. Okay. Okay, uh, David. Um, I think that, that more explanation has but most mostly stunned silence. The uh, Gimple front end, um, which is that, I mean, the summer of code um, is now over. Um, and... 
I think we've got seven, basically seven weeks of development until the um, typical close of stage one for GCC seven. Um, uh, seven or eight weeks, um, assuming normal schedule. What? Um, it, uh, how close is it to being mergeable? Would you th do you think? I think. Uh... The, the biggest question uh, to me is, what are the C front end maintainers thinking of us hijacking their front end? And well, the, the, so the, the, the phase of interaction between the two front ends needs to be reviewed by them. And then, of course, uh, I need to go over the, de of the patches in, in detail and, I guess, remove some stuff. But I, I, I'd say for um, this kind of stuff, we should try to just merge it early. We can improve it later. It's, it's only kind of a testing framework. We, we will figure out for which test cases is it good and for which we need to improve it. Like at the moment, the CFG is not constructed explicitly, which means basic block numbers may not be stable. So if we have a pass that breaks, if basic block 2 is called basic block 5, then we need either to add a way to also fix the basic block numbers or like if we have, if we need fixed alias info, so all, all the on the site info is not currently encoded. Um, so there's there's lots of things that could be added to. Could you declare something about the support the support we want to do for this, like if we only support it in our test suite and nothing else, or because otherwise people go with the fuzzers and start filing one back after each other. And, <laughs> Yeah. You'll never stop. <laughs> so, so, so what it should, it basically accepts everything. You, you hand to it, it has no error checking at the moment. So the input has to be valid GIMPL, otherwise you ice. Which is also kind of error reporting from the front end, right? We have the, we have the GIMPL verifier. This is the, the late error checking after parsing. It's not the way you do a parser, but uh, yeah. I assume that this is only enabled by a specific flag, too. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure, because otherwise, then people might just use it on accident. Okay. Yeah, trust me. Yeah. 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 Okay, David, back to you. No, that's good. I, I guess, well, um, uh, yeah, I, I was thinking of hacking on it um, before the close of stage one. Um, I'm trying desperately not to volunteer, but maybe. Uh, if it needs an extra push to get it done, um, I can help with that. Oh, yeah. I'm, my plan was also to help on it, but I was uh, asking for on one of the last uh, patches from, from Prasad, I cc'd our two C front end maintainers. I haven't mm -hmm. heard back from them. Sorry. So, because I, um, I like to, to get feedback about the, he adds a few new keywords, and then at the point he, he adds the hooks. The point of the way, if you'd like to separate the passing bit into a separate file, or just on this kind of terms, just give some, or just say, well, do whatever you want. It looks very small, like it's only one or two. If people if, if <coughs> we don't care, or. Well, if it's isolated, I think it, there should be no problem in managing that. But I'd like to hear from Joseph because I don't really yeah, dare to. Yeah, yeah I, I, I can. Joseph is not here, unfortunately. I'm actually surprised he's not here. It's just down the street. He's down the street? So we can bring him. Well, down, down the street meaning three and a half hours. But oh. Four. <laughs> Compared to California, it's close. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, David. So the, I, um, when I talked to David about this, we had a couple of areas that we thought would be useful to bring into a testing bot. One of them is just to, it's, it's too early for us to really talk. Last year, I gave a short talk on how we were using or trying to use GCC regression testing with LLVM. And the reason for this is that LLVM comes with a set of regression tests, but they only test the front end. They test that it generates correct IR. What they don't check is that IR is then properly translated to run on your actual target machine. Now, LLVM does have a set of execution tests, but they're a big they're big tests. They're suitable for 32 bit, 64 bit machines running an operating system, but they're no use if you're working as we tend to do with small embedded systems. And that's where the GCC regression tests are really strong. You can run them on just about anything. GCC is on 
processors from tiny 8-bit processors up to the biggest supercomputers. So we started working with um, this about four years ago. Um, and it became increasingly clear to us this ought to be generalizable so that the GCC regression tests become actually the definitive regression tests for any C compiler that claims to be standards compliant. And we got some useful feedback um, last year uh, that basically said, well, the infrastructure's there because you've got the DG qualifiers. And you just you don't say, is this test LLVM? You say, Do you, does your compiler support the features? And make sure that your compiler is qualified. So we've started to look at that. And I was hoping that Graham and Ed, who've been looking at this, might want to just give a few thoughts on where they're going on this. Yeah, so um, I, th um, I think the feedback from, or the, the idea at the, t at the time of last year's talk was maybe that what the mechanism that was being used to um, suggest which test results should be overridden, perhaps because a target didn't support the features that those tests were testing, was kind of a, a, a sort of text manifest file that would um, specify which tests should be overridden or perhaps which options were the test. Um, that that wasn't quite flexible enough. So one thing that I've been looking at doing was also allowing you to provide uh, your own expect file with some, uh, in which you could add some, provide some functions that the test suite could use to query um, what your target supported and for any particular test if you wanted to override them. Um, I think what I've found with with the experiments that I've done so far is that there are those um, like DG require effective target for things like allocate and LTO. Um, I think that from what I could tell, it seemed like there was some some of the some of the tests that required required a certain feature had had that DG require effective target written in it. Some of them didn't. So probably one thing that I'd like to um, try and do alongside alongside this work is to try and go through some of the tests, perhaps add more um, of those uh, check effective target um, markers to try and to try and make them uh, make it a little bit easier to uh, sort of categorize some of the tests and of um, kind of run run only tests that are relevant to the to the compiler or target that you're using it for. Um, is any of this making sense? I'm kind of quite new to actually working with the GCC test suite, so. Um. For the general tests, it, it does make sense, but as a target, main, not maintainer, but target hacker, um, every time I added add a new test, it's testing a specific new feature I just added three minutes ago, and there would be no time for other compilers such as LLVM to add that, or they might have different code generation strategies, and they don't generate this particular ASM instruction that I, I generate. So either we need to, to do something that says the target stuff is only GCC, and, but everything else is more more general or, or decorate all the target files that say GCC or, or however, or just let it run and you get 500 errors. I think you're, you're mostly interested in, in all the, the torture stuff, the compile torture, the run, execute torture, and maybe the, the C conformance, the C++ conformance tests, and not so much the, the optimization tests because those are obviously compiler dependent. Like the, the, the dump scanning is obviously only going to work to, to, to scan for GCC dumps. Yeah. Sometimes you want the diagnostic yeah. even from other compilers, but the version. Yeah. So, it, so one part of the work would be to ensure that those kind of tests are not mixed into the same exp or even single test or guard this in some way. Like, uh, All, 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 or yeah, or all the DG scan, whatever you need to set up to ignore it. And uh, and, and uh, another comment about the, all the DG require effective stuff. 
it, this is usually always an afterthought. It fails on some target, and then we start to think, okay, maybe we should add an effective target for this. So if so, nobody tried to even factor in different compilers because we are only GCC. And I guess there, they, they, I guess there, there would be some objection against adding tons of DG effective targets that we are not using because it will bit rot anyway. It would be a lot of work for us making it yeah. so that our test suite is run by yeah. other compilers. Yeah, and we can't test it anyway. You could factor the, uh, the, the tests that are required by standards to have diagnostics. You could factor that through an indirection control file. So that you know, you say, I expect a diagnostic here of, of some class, and then a, a, a defined then, yeah. file says the type of class that you would expect. Whether we want to do that, of course, is you know, what's the benefit to us? Not but a lot. The, the, but even there, the problem is that different compilers use different locations for, for different diagnostics. Maybe they can emit the errors on different lines and a different amount of errors. And so so it would, would need to be just to check whether the this case was rejected uh, or not. I, mean, I think there's no question that we can't maintain those set of tests that are passed or failed by LLVM. But I think the question for us is whether we would accept those annotations at all and just not worry about them because they're never going to affect GCC running the test suite. It's a burden for us. Well, surely, if you want to make this a multi-compiler test suite, it has to be a separate project of its own. Not tied to GCC. Yeah, it should be. I think there's, there's that, always that balance between where we would like it to be and where we reasonably think we can get it to be. Um, uh, I think so. I mean, yeah. It should be a separate project. It should start with some subset of the GCC test suite, and then we can agree that we'll copy that project into the GCC test suite. So actually, we, we do have this separate part of the test suite. We have the install testing, which does, it doesn't work uh, on all of the testing where you can switch the compiler you test. And I think it's at the moment it's libstandard C++ and some of the, it's, I don't know if it's all of GCC DG, if it's, oh, is, so. No, it, no, 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 it, so I, I, so I actually use install testing right now, just to do cross compiler testing actually. So I do install and then I do the testing using the normal install testing. And I send out results actually. Um, for AR64 ELF. Um, so right now, the only thing that fails is, I think, because of that, is the dump one. But the, 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 the question was, what, test, what part of the test suite is actually run? Because it's not, not Oh, it's quite a bit. But, but it's, but it's not, not run, I think. And there were maybe Ada is not run at all. I, I haven't checked a lot. I think it's, it's, this is a better, so this is uh, we, we, we do compare the one in tree from the one out of queue you test in full, and I think uh, almost every, all, almost all the tests are run. There, there is really, uh, yeah, I think graphite on the, maybe plugin, but almost everything is run. Yeah, the result is. This is Because we have, we have quite some testing harness that is dedicated to set up, picking up uh, target library that are in the build tree. Okay. Actually, why wouldn't give, why wouldn't Graphite run with the well, some install? People don't enable Graphite. Well, I know that, but not with the no, install. It's really because in, in the in the script that runs does install testing, all the X files are listed explicitly. I think because it uses run no. test. Okay. And not make check. I mean, if, no, Jeremy, make check if Jeremy splits off part of the test suite into a shared compiler test suite, are we okay with that? Are we okay with copying it, it back in? It's GPL, of course. Yeah. You yeah. can do or it. The, yeah. Or something that's... Yeah, are we okay with him sort of taking ownership of part of it and we'll just mirror it back in our script? Mirror it back? Well, it has to be patches and it, they have to be approved first. Yeah. That's, that's, that's really not the way to do GCC-specific stuff. Um, sometimes we want to uh, test an older compiler um, of later release of an older compiler with a new test suite. Um, we want to run the correctness test, but not necessarily test.
tests for new optimizations. So it would make sense to take optimization tests with the GCC version where it's first expected to pass. OK. Um, I'm conscious of the fact that um, we're coming up to the end of our 45 minutes and that we've got a fairly complex uh, changeover because we're going to try and dial someone else in for the next talk. Um, so I'll just leave you with a thought, and anyone who's got bright ideas, please call me either today, tomorrow, or Sunday, which is we test a lot of our systems on very what are now very, very parallel machines, and you can certainly put together a pretty decent ARM64 system with a very large number of cores for not very much money. And we found that the GCC regression tests make check with lots of parallelism, sort of blows up when you start to ask for 64 threads and so forth. We've done a bit of work trying to explore that, but I'd be interested to hear other people's experiences of that. We, uh, we, we see that at times on power with high, high uh, parallelism also. Yeah. I have one or two tests that are memory intensive. They but tend to all run at the same time. Mm. In fact, GLIPC's tests don't even yeah. work on yeah. 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 All of those testing yeah. because huh. many tests run on all yeah. the, yeah. All the yeah. threads you have. So. So uh, at Linaro, we have uh, been working on ARC64 and ARM32 bit testing quite a bit in a very, very paralyzable environment. Uh, <clears throat> we have hit several problems and submitted over the last two years several fixes to the test suite. So uh, there used to be several bugs in the GC test suite. Uh, the very last issues we have been hitting were in Deja GNU. So it was Deja GNU, uh, handling of parallelism, uh, especially for the cross-compilation stuff. Uh, natively, Deja GNU does, uh, does not seem to have issues with high parallelism, but in cross-compilation, uh, it does. S I think most of that is fixed upstream, but may not be in the latest release yet. Or we have some corruption in the yeah. logs. Yeah, that something, something yeah, yeah, there is there is something that happens there. Right? Yeah, I, I've ran into that. Yeah. It's every time I email the person who wrote it. But yeah, um, I haven't run into memory issues yet. But that might be because I have 128 gigs of memory. So is that all? Well, on on a on a 48 core machine. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying I haven't run into it. I'm saying I haven't run into it, but other people might. I think I touched the right button there. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying other people might. Have, what I'm trying to say. Uh, one thing that I uh, forgot to mention is that at, as of this moment, we do not seem to have any uh, any uh, issues on Eric 64 and RMHF in parallel testing even at 32, uh, 32 thread or 64 thread parallelism, which we do a lot of builds on. I do, uh, I do J96. I have an ID. Okay. Uh, we're out of time. Uh, thank you all very much. Um, Dave, thank you for you joining us. Um, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you physically next year. Thanks. <laughs>